This is CBS 21 News at 11. As of tomorrow, we have 100 days to make our case to America. One day after the Democratic National Convention comes to an end, the party's presidential ticket is hitting the campaign trail. Hillary Clinton and her running mate Tim Kaine stopped in Harrisburg tonight to try to win over our swing state voters. CBS 21's Bryant Madrick is live in Harrisburg, where Clinton stepped off the stage earlier tonight. Bryant. Hey, good evening, Al. Well, it's quiet here in Midtown in front of the Broad Street Market. The only sound is that of crews breaking down the stage. But earlier this evening, people filled this area in front of the market to hear Hillary Clinton's message for why voters should choose her in November. The next president of the United States. Hillary Clinton's Stronger Together bus tour stopped in Harrisburg. Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine. First thing, remind the crowd about our challenger, Donald Trump. We are so excited to be here with all of you. Clinton cited a study by economist Mark Zandi. The clinton Kane administration will create at least 10 million jobs. Mr. Trump will cost you three and a half million jobs. The economy is a big deal in a swing state like Pennsylvania. Clinton says her job plan will be the biggest since World War II. We're going to be investing in infrastructure, advanced manufacturing, clean energy technology. The Democratic nominee joined on stage by running mate Senator Tim Kaine and her husband Bill Clinton talked about raising the federal minimum wage. Popular words to many in the crowd. Raising the uh, minimum wage. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, $15 an hour, so that would be really, really good. The speech also inspired people like Jonathan Dubell. I feel like she actually believes what she's going to say. She cares about the American people and she, she has a plan for what she's going to do when she gets into office. Now the city of Harrisburg really got ready for this event by sprucing up the area in Midtown. And one of the clearest signs of that is the Broad Street Market sign right behind me. You can see all brand new light bulbs really shining bright in this area. I've seen a number of people actually take pictures in front of this sign. It really is brightening up, brightening up this area. Now I am talked to the mayor. He told me that Third Street is going to remain closed tonight will not reopen until tomorrow. I also talked to Clinton staffers. They tell me that she's going to remain here in the central Pennsylvania area throughout the night before she makes her way out to Pittsburgh tomorrow. Reporting live in Harrisburg, Brian Tamadrick, CBS 21 News. All right, Brian, nice job. Days of hard work went into bringing Hillary to Harrisburg. Crews constructed a stage in the middle of the street, painted light poles, laid mulch, made sure the Broad Street Market sign shone bright, as you saw. Mayor Eric Papenfu says these preparations are at no cost to the city. They will be paid for by Hillary Clinton's campaign. All that will be worked out with the campaign and, uh, and per standard uh, reimbursement procedures. Businesses in and around the Broad Street Market hope tonight's event will help rally residents from neighboring towns to visit the market more often. Of course, not everybody was happy that Hillary came to visit the capital city. The Republican State Committee questioned Clinton's choice of location for her rally, which is just blocks away from where a man named Jaleel Aziz was arrested, accused of having connections with ISIS. This is an ISIS attack every 83 hours for the last two months, and it's not even mentioned. And she's coming to a capital city where there was an arrest made that stopped this stuff before it happened, but yet it's not even. This is the disconnect between the reality of the real world right here in Harrisburg and the world that Hillary Clinton lives in and has lived in. The Keystone State is proving to be a key state in the race for the White House. Right now, Clinton leads Trump by 9% in a two-way matchup in PA. That is according to a Suffolk University poll. And this just into our newsroom on Monday. Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump will be coming to Central PA. He will hold a rally at Cumberland Valley High School in Mechanicsburg. Doors will open at 4 p.m. It starts at 7 o'clock. And new tonight, federal authorities are investigating a possible security breach targeting Clinton's campaign. According to a law enforcement official, a computer hack was discovered by private investigators hired by the campaign. The FBI and Justice Department are working to determine the scope and nature of the breach. This investigation is the latest in a series of probes into system breaches targeting Democratic Party organizations, including the Democratic National Committee. 
And time for a look at that first morning forecast. Meteorologist Chris Nallen in for Tom Russell tonight. We're tracking a little bit of shower activity, uh, mainly to our north. Most of us are staying on the drier side, but you can see, oh, the northern fringe there, Perry County, just outside of Millersburg and Halifax. Some showers, maybe even some flashes of a quick lightning. Otherwise, we are pretty dry here across the radar screen. You can see the most of central Pennsylvania is on the quieter side. However, muggy, so even though it is dry now, there may still be a stray shower during the overnight period, maybe a rumble of thunder. 82 degrees in Harrisburg. Ooh, it is warm. It's muggy. 76 right now in Lancaster. Same deal in Lebanon. 76 in Carlisle. Down the road on 83 there at 76. It's a popular number in New York. So starting out the day on your Saturday, we'll uh, start out with mostly cloudy skies. Some sunshine breaks through. Temps in the low 70s, but very muggy, uncomfortable weather. Noontime number right around 78. Not too hot tomorrow. It's all about that humidity, more clouds than anything, and some scattered showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon. I'll let you know what the second half of the weekend is going to look like in that full first morning forecast in just moments. Al. All right, sounds good, Chris. Thank you. New details now about a shooting in Lancaster County. Police say the two people are in custody tonight. They expect to update the media on the charges first thing in the morning. The shooting happened in Columbia around 3.30 a.m. It started as a shots fired call on North 7th Street. Police talked to witnesses who say it sounded like the shooter was moving. It's unclear if the gunman was in a car. No one was hurt. We'll continue to bring you updates as this story develops. In Dauphin County, two men are facing charges for three burglaries in the area. Police say these two men are responsible. In one burglary, police say the homeowner caught them in the act. The suspects threatened the victim with knives and drove away, pointing a rifle at the homeowner. The two were arrested after police found them to be driving a stolen car. Two of the burglaries happened in Lower Paxton Township, one in East Hanover Township. Right now, the search is on for a killer in Harrisburg. Tonight, a $2,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an arrest in the city's eighth homicide of the year. It happened last night just before, I'm sorry, not last year, Last night, just before midnight on Holly Street, police say a man was shot multiple times and died at the hospital. The victim has been identified, but his name will not be released until family is notified. If you know anything, please call police. New tougher rules are in effect for the people who oversee the Milton Hershey School and its $12 billion in assets. PA Attorney General Kathleen Kane says her office has a new agreement on the Hershey Trust. It limits board members to serving 10 years and caps how much money they make. I think when people understand that there is a real check and balance here, that it is, it has no political motivation. Um, the, the sole motivation is to make sure that that trust does as well as it possibly can to educate these children. Now five board members must resign three this year, two by the end of next year. The number of board members will also increase to 13 people. Well, Kathleen Kane also dealing with her own case, the state's top prosecutor says she will decide at her own criminal trial next month whether to testify in her own defense. Kane is charged with leaking grand jury information and lying about it under oath. She feels confident in going into her trial. I don't plan on being convicted because I am very confident in the jury system. And I'm confident once the jury hears the entire truth that they will um, return a not guilty verdict. Kane says she'll hear out the case being made against her before she decides to testify. Her trial is on August 8th in Norristown, Montgomery County. New at 11, the Dauphin County District Attorney is urging residents to be aware of synthetic marijuana. He says it's being distributed in the Harrisburg area and has landed 20 people in the hospital over two days. Patients have had advanced delirium and many had to be revived in the ER. Synthetic marijuana is also known as K2, darkness, spice, and space. Police say a Pennsylvania woman laced her baby's formula with a drug that helps heroin addicts kick the habits so that he would sleep. Police say 28 year old Corinne Barnt from Bucks County told them she drugged her son's formula six or seven times from November to April. The drug she's accused of using is buprenorphine. It's a painkiller also used to wean addicts off heroin. She is in jail on $1 million bail. A teen charged with slashing and stabbing 20 fellow students and a security guard at a Western Pennsylvania high school wants to plead guilty but mentally ill. Alex Rybal was 16 years old during the 2014 rampage at Franklin Regional High School in Marysville. His attorney has never denied the boy committed the attacks using two 8-inch kitchen knives from his home, but has argued it was fueled by his mental health issues. A judge must agree he was mentally ill in order to allow the plea. I want to hear him again. 
I want to hear them laugh and shout and cry and play. I want to hear them again. A man who sheltered students after a shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School is excited for the community to rebuild. The shooting killed 20 kids and seven adults. A new school will be put to use for the new school year, and tonight we're getting a look inside. The school was built to appeal to children and keep them safe. It has a video monitoring system, an elevated ground floor, and impact resistant doors and windows. The safety and security measures that are in this building are, are second to none. The new school will serve kids from peak pre-K through fourth grade. 70 of the returning students were kindergartners when the shooting happened. A San Diego police gang unit officer is dead after a shooting during a traffic stop last night. Another officer was also wounded. Patrolmen responded to the officer's backup call and found them suffering from gunshot wounds to their upper bodies. The officer who died was a 16 year San Diego police veteran. The other officer is expected to survive. One suspect was shot by officers and arrested on suspicion of murder. A second suspect was arrested today. Friends and family are coming together after a woman goes missing in Central PA. How they're still holding out hope four years later. Chris. And even at this hour, we're tracking some showers, some of which are heavy, otherwise warm and muggy weather for the weekend. I'll break it down coming up after the break. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep pursuing our daughter. You know, she's worth every bit of energy we put into it. You know, every bit of energy. A Lebanon County family has not seen or heard from their daughter in four years. Courtney Stauffer from Palmyra was 21 years old when she disappeared in 2012 after a night out with friends in Harrisburg. CBS 21's Kristen Mazur is live at a lantern release in Granville tonight with how her family is still holding out hope. Hey, Kristen. Hey Al, good evening. Yeah, I was talking with Courtney, par Courtney's parents tonight and they tell me that every single day that goes by without Courtney is more agonizing than the next. Courtney, as you mentioned, been gone for about four years now and it's without hope. Um, you know, certainly uh, hope is what keeps them hanging on and they said that they're going to continue to hope that Courtney does come home soon or at least until this nightmare is over. One. Two, three, Woo! Courtney! Trying to, you know, remember her and be happy and be together on this day. 25 lanterns lighting up the sky in honor of how old Courtney Stauffer would be today. You can't give up hope. I mean, you know, we can't give up hope. They can't give up hope. Four years ago today, Courtney vanished. That night she had gone to her Palmyra home. Gone the next day, her keys, cell phone, and car all left behind. Just been a long four years. So hold on to these words. Hold on to the memories. Every day is agonizing because you wake up knowing she's not here. You're not going to see her. You're not going to be able to talk to her. The police still actively looking, giving hope to Courtney's parents. Hope that one day their daughter will come home. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep pursuing our daughter. You know, she's worth every bit of energy we put into it. You know, every bit of energy. And Courtney's parents reminding everyone out there that the $50,000 reward is still out there as well. So if anybody has any uh, leads at all, any tips out there at all, knowing about where Courtney may be, big or small, they urge you to come forward. Reporting live tonight in Granville, Krista Mazur, CBS 21 News. And now, CBS 21 News First Warning Weather with meteorologist Chris Nallen. All right, switching gears to the weather right now. Warm and humid night for sure, so we are seeing the chance for a pocket of showers or thunder showers in and around the area, and that's mainly to the north. You can see that right now, northern uh, Dauphin County into, say, northern Lebanon County. That's where those showers and thunder showers have been. Here's a closer view from our first warning live Doppler HD. There it is uh, around Likens and just around Tower City, northern Lebanon County. A lot of these are just scooting to the east and southeast. So uh, Lebanon City, you yeah, can't rule out that you may see a few some heavy showers kind of rolling through over the next hour or so. But uh, most of us are dry right now. You can see that Harrisburg points south and points to the west. Nothing coming in, but it's kind of one of those deals when we're dealing with those warm and humid nights. There could be some showers or thunder showers popping up. So just isolated in nature. Otherwise, more humidity is working in as we speak. It's going to be a, a bit unsettled this weekend. So hit or miss showers or storms possible. 82 right now in Harrisburg winds out of the southwest at six. 
And there it is. Temperatures in the low 80s in Harrisburg, 76 in Lebanon, 76 right now in Blaine, and also the same deal in Carlisle and York and Lancaster and Reading. And it's a popular number right now, Al, 76 degrees. Is that your favorite number? It is now. Okay, it's a good number out there, right? Wind speed, though. Yeah, generally out of the southwest uh, or calm. Currently in New York and Lancaster, not much of a big deal here. But here's the bigger picture. Look at the dew point numbers right now. 72 is what it is in Harrisburg, 70 in Carlisle, upper 60s in Lancaster and York. Think of yourself as an ant in grass during the morning and it's and it's like a that. lot of dew a lot of dew and you kind of just walk through it it's kind of ugh, it's what it is though you met, al i had a, a i was giving an analogy i'm sorry you totally messed it up i'm sorry interrupting okay let's talk let's rewind all right let's talk about some showers and thunder showers that are to the north but like i said most of them have been to the north could still see a couple coming our way so here's the bigger picture right now we have low pressure to our west that's going to bring in that southerly flow that's also increasing the moisture so as that low comes closer to us we see those showers and thunderstorms possible into the afternoon especially the afternoon tomorrow so tomorrow morning you wake up it's going to be muggy. You'll see some sunshine breaking through those clouds. Then throughout the afternoon, we'll see the chance of more showers and storms kind of bubbling up. Hit or miss, not a washout, so not everybody getting wet at the same time. And then into your Saturday night, more of the same, a few showers possible, and then we do it all over again on your Sunday. So overnight tonight, 70, maybe an isolated shower or storm, otherwise dry. 82 for tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies with afternoon thunderstorms possible. Here we go, most of them scattered about. Winds out of the southeast about 5 to 10 and looking ahead, here it is. A little unsettled, like I said, for the weekend. Monday, late day storm possible, mid 80s Tuesday. At least it's seasonably warm coming up this yes. week. But then it starts to heat up. The oven door opens back up Friday, 90 degrees. And that forecast brought to you by Members First of Federal Credit Union. I'm sorry, that was a beautiful analogy. I was trying to go somewhere with that. Uh, you, you can interrupt my next reading. No, don't worry about it. Uh, join Rob Hanrahan <laughs> and Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell. There they are for some amazing exotic cars mm. at Supercars on State Street. They're emceeing the event. All proceeds go towards fighting breast cancer. Great cause. It's free to see the cars. It goes from noon to five. Al. Thank you, Chris. Will you be going there? I won't, no. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll be thinking about it, though. All right, after a couple's baby boy was in intensive care, they're trying to help other families in the same position. Our mom's taxi service is helping them drastically cut costs. And a new report is out saying Uber did not decrease drunk driving stats. How the tech companies responding after the break. You're watching CBS 21 News at 11. Helping families with a need at the most while their babies fight for their lives. She drives families with children in the neonatal intensive care unit to and from the hospital for free. On top of their hospital bills, she and her husband spent thousands of dollars to park outside of the hospital to visit their dying son and knew something had to change. There were a lot of babies alone a lot of the time. Certain families, they can't afford to visit. When her 10-month-old son died, she and her husband came up with the NICU Transportation Service to honor him. Now, Uber is becoming more popular, but a new study shows it may not be helping the number of people who drink and drive. Researchers looked at drunk driving stats in the 100 biggest cities in the U.S. for five years. They found the rise of Uber did not correspond to any decrease in drunk driving deaths. Uber responded to the study saying it's happy to help people and find an alternative to drinking and driving. All right, Chanel's here now with sports. Chanel. Al, the City Islanders trying to fight their way into the playoffs, but first, the War of the Roses continue as the Revs and Barnstormers faced off for Game 2. They're set. Sports is up next. You're watching CBS 21 News at 11. Twenty-one Sports with Chanel Douglas. Who doesn't love a good old fashioned rivalry? Revs and Barnstormers back at it again for game two of War of the Roses. Revs taking game one of this set, but tonight won't be the same result. You pick up this game, top of the first, no score yet. Sean Halton up to bat, and the Barnstormers will strike first as he sends this ball deep to left for a three run homer. Barnstormers taking the early lead, three nothing. Top of the third, the runs will continue as Casey Hobson comes up to bat. He launches this rocket deep to right. That one is gone. A solo shot to give the Barnstormers a 5-0 lead. Bottom of the ninth, Brandon Chavez grounds out to end the game. 
Barnstormers take game two, winning 14 to one. It's another day of practice for NFL teams. This new year and new season means a fresh start. At least that's what some players are hoping for. Here's Buffalo Bills running back and Harrisburg native LaShawn McCoy at today's practice. Now, earlier this month, we learned that McCoy was not going to be facing charges after a nightclub brawl back in February. He says he's had some time to reflect and he wants to do better. Sitting back and viewing the whole situation, you know, as a leader, um, the guy that I want to be for this team, you know, just things like that just can't happen. I mean, there's no excuses for it. I mean, you, you don't hear of other guys like Peyton Manning or, 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 you know, Tom Brady getting an incident like that. This will be McCoy's second season with the Bills. Now, despite a challenging season, the playoffs are still within reach for the City Islanders. After two wins in two games, this team looks to build on that momentum tonight as they take on the Rochester Rhinos. It's Christmas in July at F&B Field. Players wearing ugly sweater jerseys in this matchup. In the 87th minute game is scoreless. Sean Touch is there with the header for the Rhinos. Rochester taking the late lead 1-0. Now in stoppage time, City down 1-0. Off the corner kick, Brett Jankalkis goes for the header and finds the back of the net. Jankalkis with the late equalizer with the final whistle. That'll do it. City Islanders earn a draw in the final minutes of the game that makes three straight unbeaten games for the team. Jankalkis says tying up the game was big for this team. Getting the tie was huge just because, um, I mean, I think we had the majority of chances and I think we definitely could have gotten three points, but getting the tie keeps the momentum going. Um, if we would have lost and gotten zero points, that would have kind of stopped that, that two win streak we had and just, just getting that tie I think keeps it going and into our next game. So where does this lead the City Islanders in the playoff race? Well, here's a look at the current USL standings. At the top of the conference, there's Louisville City. The Rhinos coming in fifth place at 8-4-8. Eight, and, eight. and on the bottom half of the Eastern Conference, there are the City Islanders. City still in 11th place. But after tonight's match, the City Islanders received one point and are now 6-13-3 with 21 points. The team still in reach of the playoffs. And back to tonight's game, before there were any goals, love was in the air. A local couple, Derek and Amanda, taking part in a halftime game when Derek drops down a one knee and pops the question. And the look of her face and just the reaction there, it looks like she said yes. Yeah, I'm thinking Pretty I said sure yes. Pretty sure she said yes. Good job. The emotions, excitement, very special moment for those two. Just amazing to see. You know, it is. love is in the air. Aww. Love is in the air. Very sweet. Very and, sweet. It, and was on TV now, too. Yes, it's on TV now, too. So they'll have this moment to yeah. record and see. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're watching. Aww. All right. We'll be right back with a special send-off. You're watching CBS 21 News at 11. Hand hand this weekend. He's home for the Democratic National Convention. He's rested. He's showered. He's ready to go. Be recapping stories from the DNC. That's on Sunday. I think he did. That's on Sunday morning at CBS 21 at 830. And all right, we were bummed about this at 10. We have to say goodbye to Donna Kirker Morgan on the right. You know, who she is Mike Bothwell, the guy there. He is our news director, hired all three of us. Today was their last day. Both incredibly great people. And it, I'm bummed already that they're not here. So. Sad. Very sad, sad to see them go.